the last trading day of the month ends in a very bizarre note for energy stocks. They were down, but they were up for the most part today. But the price per barrel of oil was down big. What's happening here? Well, I actually t think today was a pretty optimistic day. We saw the price per barrel down and down pretty substantially. 1% is no small move. Yet the price of energy stocks stayed relatively flat or positive, depending on which one, throughout the day. Optimistic sign, if you ask me. It's always good to see energy stocks outperform the price per barrel. Now, conversely, they underperformed yesterday. So I don't want to get too caught up in this. But what I'm trying to highlight is that there's not a panic sell. If we had seen the price per barrel down 1% today and the energy stocks down 1, 2, or 3% today, yeah, that would have been unsettling. Not enough to get me off the trade or the investment, but it would have been unsettling. Much less unsettling than Schlumberger up most of the day, right? I think it's pretty optimistic here. Um, one piece of news that was kind of concerning, and you know, we got to figure out what we're going to make of this, is OPEC expecting a surplus next year. You would think a surplus means falling prices. Now, I don't know how important and how, or how big that's going to be, if that's actually going to be the case. Right now, we are at a deficit. They've laid out their terms for production for some time. U.S. producers don't seem too happy to produce with the current administration and suffering negative $37 per barrel oil last year. They've hedged a lot of them themselves out for several months. So it's not like they've got a whole ton of extra free cash flow to just plop into drilling new oil and stuff like that. So I think things are not dire in the supply demand curve. I think the deficit will remain, um, but it's a little cold water on the market, which kind of wants to see a deficit and continuing high prices. However, we can look into the energy stocks outperforming who would probably have a much harder sell-off if that were any reason for concern. Now, another thing that makes me not too concerned about this, it was just a couple weeks ago, when OPEC said, no, we're not gonna increase our US or our production after the US said we need more oil for the global recovery. Two interesting notions to keep in mind. Um, I'm, I'm remaining optimistic on the supply demand dynamic. We are at a very high price per barrel um, and we are at below pre-pandemic consumption and we are on a clear trend of increasing consumption. These stocks haven't taken back their dividends. They've been paying debt early. The signs are there for strong stocks, but they're very low prices. Just seems like a good place to have some exposure, if you ask me. And I'm starting to get a little concerned about the inflation picture. I had been concerned, had, you know, kind of taken things off, but we're now all of a sudden hearing that Social Security Trust is running low. You know, I didn't go fully in depth with that. And people have been talking about that for years. I remember when I was in Model Congress in high school, we were talking about Social Security. So, you know, they will find a way to get out of that, but it's just another thing that's not in the stimulus package of 3.5 trillion. And I was, you know, the, these tr stimulus packages, the one that Trump was trying to get through, you know, in January of this year, just at the end of his presidency, was 5,000 pages. And it had absurd things in it. It had nothing to do with COVID. Things like counting the fish in the Gulf, like one particular type of fish, you know, all these things to do with fish, millions and millions of dollars, $1.3 billion to Egypt. Remember that? I, don't, I obviously have not read all 5,000 pages of, of Biden's first COVID plan. I'm sure it has a lot of that fluff in it. 
I have no idea. I mean, I do have a very good idea about the existence of fluff in the 3.5 trillion they're trying to get done, but I have no idea how bad it actually is. So that, all that money, it's, you know, four and a half trillion something. I've heard six. Where, where'd six come from? I, don't, I honestly don't know where the six came from. Maybe they're adding the one that passed earlier in the year. All I know is 1.1 and 3.5. So 4.5, 4.6. That's a lot of money. Then you throw in social security problems, okay? That's a lot of money. And all of a sudden, not only do you have a supply demand, recovering demand, continuing to grow demand picture for energy, but you've got a potential money crisis. And what should do well in a money crisis is the world's most important commodity, in my opinion. So it's an interesting situation. We're going to let things play out. We're going to let this New Orleans area situation play out. We're going to see if this is just a lot of trading going on around that. And that's my current belief right now. I think a lot of what's going on right now is a lot of this trading. We'll see what happens. So until next time, peace out.